Hi, I'm Nicole Young. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about a brand new photography software application that's coming out very soon, and it's called Radiant Photo. I'll be walking through some images to give you a good idea of what to expect for this software. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I kind of jump into the software, I want to very briefly give a few observations that I've had while using Radiant Photo. The first one is that it really doesn't overprocess your images. The auto or AI processing that it adds to your photos as soon as you add them into the software, it doesn't automatically just, you know, overprocess them. It's going to give you a really nice clean edit with really no artifacts or halos to it. And I found that this is very similar to the way and style that I like to edit my photos and almost how I would edit them completely with a very nice clean edit. It does use AI to edit your images. It also will kind of detect what's in your scene and edit it based on that. And I'll show you that here in a moment. And then lastly, Radiant Photo is not trying to be your only photography application. It's designed to be a complement to what you already use. For example, with my workflow, I tend to first edit my photos in Lightroom. I'll work on the white balance, maybe if it needs some correction, I will adjust the color profile and make some basic edits to the tone and colors overall. Then I'll send it over to Radiant Photo. Sometimes I do that directly from Lightroom. Sometimes I'll do that after making a few adjustments in Photoshop. And then I will save it out of Radiant Photo. Oftentimes I'll go back and maybe do some of those finishing touches like adding a vignette, for example. And I just wanna say that I am actually really thrilled to see an app like this on the market. So many photography apps tend to focus on those kind of extreme edits that we only do to our images every once in a while. But Radiant Photo is like a breath of fresh air for photography. It kind of feels like I'm going back to my roots and just creating great photos without trying to do too much to them. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the software and let's see what Radiant Photo can do for your images. So I have Radiant Photo open right here, and this is the standalone version. It also comes with plugins for Lightroom, Photoshop, and also Corel Paint Shop Pro. I'm not going to be showing how to use any of those in this video. This is merely a demonstration of what the app is all about, along with some walkthroughs of some quick edits to really give you an idea of what to expect with this software. So to start, I need to get some photos into the software. Now, if you click, you're able to kind of navigate and locate a file you'd like, but I already have some photos in a folder and I'm just going to simply drag and drop them into this window here. So I'm gonna open up my finder view. I'm going to select all of these photos and just click and drag them all and release. So you can see at the bottom there is a film strip view and it's loading all of those images. If I just kind of scroll left and right, it's slowly walking through and processing them. You'll notice a really small green kind of triangle there in the top right corner. When you see that, it means that it hasn't processed the photo yet. So, you know, you can see that in a lot of these, it's already kind of walked through and actually done that processing. If I were to click on one of these images though, it's going to actually pull through and do that processing so you don't have to really wait too long for it. But I'll go ahead and start with this first image here and let's just kind of get an idea of what we have here with the software and what all of the panels are. So first of all, when you have a photo and it's kind of done its initial processing, uh, you know, it's already added some adjustments to the image. So if I were to click and release, I can actually see that before and after of what it has already done to the photo. Now that's the fastest way to see your before and after, but if we go to the very top, there's a side-by-side -side view, so I can see uh, the before and after there just in this view if I wanna kinda get a full picture of what's happening. And then you can also get a split view where you can take that little slider and move it left and right. Now if I go back to my just kind of standard view, on the very bottom left, that slider is also there. So you can click and drag it at any time if you want to kind of preview that kind of swipe left and right before and after. Now, another thing we have is there's an arrow on the left. It's a really small arrow. And if you click that, you'll actually be able to see all of the presets. At the very top, we have the navigator. You can use this slider if you want to kind of zoom in and out, but you can also use keyboard shortcuts. They're the same keyboard shortcuts you use in other apps. So you're gonna use Command or Control Plus to zoom in. 
Command or Control minus to zoom out. And then if you're zoomed in pretty far, you can use Command or Control zero, and that's gonna bring you back to full view. Just below it are the smart presets. These are presets that are usually going to be auto detected. So you can see that it, there is a little button here that says detected, and it discovered that this is a landscape with a night scene. So it applied AI settings based on that information. Now you can go through if you want to and kind of play with some of the other scenes to kind of see what they look like, and maybe there's something that you like a little bit better. And at any time, you can go back and click that little detect button, and it's going to redetect what your scene actually is and just bring everything back to the way it was. This drop down here has a few settings. You have a subtle and a pro setting, and then my smart presets, which I don't have anything right here, so um, I'm not going to see anything if I were to go there. But the subtle presets are basically just a little bit more subtle version of what you have with the pro presets. But I find that the pro presets have been really good, and they don't. I don't feel like my images are overprocessed or overdone in any way. You can also view these as a grid view or a list view, and it gives you a little bit of a preview of what they'll look like in that grid view. At the very bottom here, we have some standard presets, so you can kind of go through, you know, and kind of play with some of the different settings there, maybe preview them as grid view, and uh, just, you know, just presets. Everybody knows what presets are, so I'm not going to kind of focus on these for too long. But the top presets, those smart presets at the top here, uh, this is going to be kind of the core part of what happens when you first initially bring a photo into Radiant Photo. So I'm just actually going to just collapse this left panel just so we have a little bit more space to actually view what's going on here because for the rest of everything else, I'm going to be using mostly the panel on the right. Before I get there though, uh, let's look at the film strip here again. I showed it a little bit, um, but you can always drag and drop more photos into this film strip if you want to add more images to your editing session. You can click this little plus icon to basically open a new photo and bring it in there as well. There's little icons here that are going to let you kind of sort through and just jump over to other photos. You can also use those left and right arrows on your keyboard and that does the same thing. And then there's a nice little drop down here that actually gives you a list of the images. So if you know that you have one you wanna to jump to, you can click that photo and it'll take you right to it. At the very top, we have a few different editing modes. We always start out, for the most part, in quick edit, and this is where that smart preset's going to be applied, and then you just have a few options over here on the right for your smart editing. For a lot of images, that's probably all you'll need, especially if you have already processed your images in other applications. Most of the photos that you're going to see here are actually raw photos, so there is no pre-editing done to most of these images, and I'll point it out when I do have, I think I have one in here that is a PSD file, and I'll point that out when I get to it. So the other option here at the top is a detailed edit. And once you click that, then you get a lot more options here over on the right. You get you know, the option to crop, you can kind of flip your image, you can rotate it. Then you have all these other options here uh, to kind of play with. So um, I'm just gonna keep collapsing that left panel because I just want to kind of have a nice and kind of clean view here. And let's go ahead and jump over to a few other images and just kind of kind of preview this and see what it's doing to your photos. So this next image here is a PSD file. So this was a focus stack that I did in Photoshop and I did a little bit of editing to the image beforehand, uh, mostly white balance correction. But it, as a PSD file, it's still going to make some edits. If I click and release, you can see that it's adding some nice contrast and some color and detail to the photo. And, and this is a great edit. I would be really happy with this. I think the only thing I might want to do is just maybe add like a vignette or something to it, uh, just to kind of really bring the focus to the center. That's a PSD photo, so um, you know you can use almost any image type inside of Radiant Photo. Okay, let's jump to the next one here. Now, first actually I'm gonna go back over to those presets on the left, because I wanna show that it found that this is a food and drink photo. And if I actually back up real quickly, I can see that it found that this is flowers and plants, which is very appropriate because it's a close-up of a spider on a flower, so that's perfectly fine. Um, but this is, uh, you know, it categorized it correctly, so then it makes adjustments based on that category. So once those basic edits have been applied, you can play around with some other edits. 
I usually like to kind of see what those original edits did. So I usually kind of click and release, you know, and it's it added some some really nice contrast without making things too bright or too dark. It boosted the color in the right areas and overall did a really great job. If I go back over to quick edit at the top, you know, this is where you're going to have just just very simple edits that you can work with. So if you're working on a photo or on a group of photos and you don't want to spend too much time on each image, you just want them to pop. Maybe you're pushing out a whole bunch of photos for proofing uh, for your client to view and you want the photos to look good, but you don't want to spend too much time on them. That's a, This is a good option for that. You know, so we have exposure here, uh, here on the right. And, you know, I'm just going to kind of play around with the settings to show you what they do. Uh, one nice thing that they've done with some of these settings is they give you these low, medium, and high options. So you can just kind of test what it looks like with, you know, somewhere in this range. And look, at high to this software is 51, and that's fantastic because that is a really high setting. Rarely do people push things all the way up, and the highest you can go here is 150. So high for this is is really, that's pretty intense, but it's it's not going to be overdone. You know, so that's what the exposure is going to do there. Um, I probably would want this more like a low setting because I don't want it to be washed out. We have another thing in here called depth. Uh, you can kind of think of this as the way I've thought of it is at least is kind of like either kind of like a uh, bringing out the details, which is what that definition is going to do, or kind of boosting the contrast. You know, so you can choose between those two, play with your kind of strength setting there. You can also go down and adjust the vibrancy and just increase the color saturation basically without, you know, vibrancy is going to be a little bit kinder and gentler to the red areas. So you're not going to see those areas, those colors get overdone. Let's jump to the next image. I have a macro of a dragonfly. And if I click and release on this, that made a huge difference in that edit there. So one thing I can see that I would want to do with this photo is crop it. And I would need to go to the detailed edit to do that. So I'll click detailed edit and then I'll go over I'll click that crop tool and when you do any kind of cropping the first thing you need to do is click start cropping you want to choose your aspect ratio first but it's going to default to original and that's usually a setting i'm going to stick with for the most part so i'll click start cropping and then i'll just drag it down from the top left and when i'm finished i can click apply crop now if you wanted to change your crop you can go back and do that just click start cropping again and it's going to let you go back to it Okay, again, let's go to another photo here. Now, this is a photo with a lot of contrast to it. Um, you know, you can see that it already is actually starting to kind of fill in some of those areas. Let's jump over to quick edit so I can show you real quickly one of the sliders that works really well for this type of situation. So this setting here, the light diffusion slider, if I click that and then move it to the right, what that does is it tries to kind of balance out the dark and really contrasty areas with those bright over bright areas. Overall, it's usually going to kind of flatten the tone in your image. So it's kind of something you want to reserve for images with a lot of contrast. Otherwise, you're just going to have a photo that looks like it needs contrast added to it. Um, we also have color here at the top. The color slider is great because it does a good job of, of, of really like balancing out uh, any kind of color cast in the photo. So I'll just take that and move it to the left and you can see that the image had a lot of kind of muddy reddish and yellows, but as, as I move it to the right, it tries to kind of compensate for that to balance out and correct that color. Let's keep going. Let's jump to the next image. This next image here is an autumn scene at Silver Falls State Park. So right off the bat, let's see what it did. And if I just click and release, it added a really nice amount of contrast and color to the photo. Uh, so, you know, I would be happy with this photo as is. But of course, it's always fun to play with the settings to see what else you can get. So let's go ahead and jump down to detailed edit and see what we can do. So if I go into the color settings and I scroll down a bit, there's an option here for foliage toning. I'll go ahead and click this. And just for fun, I'm going to increase that strength slider quite a bit so that way you can really see the result. I'm also going to collapse that uh, panel on the left there once again. So by default, it was set to this maximum green uh, preset here. I'm going to change it to goldenrod because this is more of an autumn scene. 
And then below that, we have a, a secondary type of foliage toning. So maybe I'll try burnt sienna for that and see if this is going to kind of intensify, you know, the kind of autumn colors in this. And I'll just kind of take each of those sliders, kind of play with them, move them around, and, you know, just kind of see what kind of results I can get. There's also a color contrast slider here, which is kind of fun to play with. I'll go ahead and click that, and I'm just going to move it pretty far to the right. It definitely is adding some darkness to the photo, but it's also adding contrast between the kind of contrasting colors, which there are quite a few of in here. We have a lot of reds and greens, which are definitely contrasting colors. So I'm probably not going to use this because I do feel like it's adding too much contrast to the image, but I wanted to show you that it was there. And it's a good, it's a good um, tool to kind of play with when you have a lot of color in your image. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump to this next photo of a woodpecker. And if I click and release, you can see it's definitely bringing out a lot of detail in the photo. Now, I want to point out that the edits that are happening here, the kind of auto edits, they're not just an exposure enhancement. They're not just taking that exposure slider and moving it to the right. If that were the case, it would have processed it completely differently. There are some white areas in here that would have ended up getting washed out. But instead, it kind of does a smart thing, and it knows to basically pull out the detail in the shadows by making it brighter, but not overexposing the areas that are already really bright. Uh, you know, so again, this is a really great, just nice and quick and clean edit of this bird photograph. I'm going to jump over to this image of sheep and do that before and after. And this is a great example of where it is definitely taking the areas that need to be enhanced and, and kind of working with those. But if you notice as I click off and on, the background is barely even touched. It's the, the sky is kind of blown out already. It's a little bit bright, but it's not getting overdone with the edits to the foreground. So that was a really nice thing to see. Now you can kind of go into the tone if you want to make some more adjustments to the tone. For example, I might want to go to white point. And by taking that white point slider, it's kind of like decreasing the highlights in your photo. So it's kind of a subtle adjustment, which is really a lot of the theme for many of the edits here. But that's always how I personally have done my editing is I make a lot of small adjustments. And in the end, I have a photo that does not look like it was over-processed. It looks like it did when I saw it, or maybe just a little bit better than I saw it in person. So um, I'm not going to go through too much more of this, but I do want to walk through a few more photos, just show you the before and after. All of these are the auto edits. I'll jump over to quick edit and I'm going to make that left panel visible so you can actually see which preset it's pulling from. Uh, so here's another one here. This is a macro photo. And if I click it, this really looks very similar to the final edit that I actually ended up creating when I edited this photo before I even had this software. Uh, again, found it as flowers and plants, which is very accurate and it works well with this type of photo. I have a nice little mushroom photo here with a before and after. It's just a really good, clean edit. It's adding contrast, it's adding brightness, it's increasing that vibrance and the color without pushing it too far and making it look over-processed. Uh, let's see, here's another image. I'll just do the quick before and after. Again, just very nice, subtle edits to make it look so much better. Go to my elephant photo here. And we'll look at that before and after. That did a great job with the color. This is one where it was really muddy in that before photo, but with the after image, it was able to balance out those colors. Another thing that Radiant Photo does is it works really well with faces. Um, so this edit, this did a great job with this edit. It, this was photographed at sunset, you know, with this really nice sun glow coming off to the left. And the light was just really beautiful on her face. And it was just a little too blue with this straight out of camera look. Uh, but it did a great job of warming it up and making it just, you know, really pop. Uh, so if I jump over to detailed edit, there's a little section here for faces. So I'll go ahead and click that. And then here you can see which faces it has found. Uh, so it's, there's, it's only found one face in here, which makes sense because uh, her mom, her eyes aren't open. It's not really a straight on face. And I probably would end up cropping this anyway. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll just do a really quick crop to this. And just to focus this on the little girl. 
and then I'll go ahead and maybe balance it out there a little bit and then apply the crop. So now down here, you have all these different settings for the face. I'm not going to do a lot of things to her face. Um, you know, she's just a, a young toddler and she's not going to need things like makeup, skin correction. Um, I will go ahead and show you what some of those look like though. We've got skin adjustments. You know, she doesn't really have a lot of uh, blemishes going on. I mean, there is some touch up here that I would need to do outside of this app uh, if I wanted if I wanted to clean that up it looks like she had some food on her face but there are some you know like eye enhancement is a great one if I were to take that and I'm just going to push it all the way to the right it's going to look a little intense but you can see what it's doing that it's really making those eyes pop you know if I have it all the way to the left or actually let me move it about halfway and then I'll just toggle it off and on it's making a nice subtle enhancement there uh, you can enlarge the eyes if you want to, and you know you can push it all the way to the right, and that looks a little bit cartoonish. But if you just want to make it just a tiny bit enlarged, um, you know that's almost so subtle that you can't even see it. So I probably wouldn't even use that. And you know she's a little girl; she doesn't have any dark circles. If you had a photo where there were no catch lights, there are catch lights. You can see them. There's that horizon in the background, um, but you can add catch lights to a face. So I wanted to just kind of point out that there are some really great features there for portrait photographers as well. Uh, so, you know, that's pretty much it. I have a few more photos here I can kind of show you. Um, again, this image looked like the smart editing color maybe worked a little too hard on this photo. So I would probably drag this back to bring back some of the original color. Uh, it looked at the image and it saw a whole bunch of yellow and reds. So as you know, in, in the software's mind, it thinks that there's just too much of it. So it tries to compensate for that. But even at 100, it really didn't do an over intense job. It still kept it kind of to a nice edit. And I would have still been happy with that photo. And then let's just jump to this last photo here. And I'll just do a quick before and after. Um, I really like the coloring that it did to this actually. And in fact, if you wanted to add even more color to your photo, one thing I haven't jumped over to yet is the kind of color grading panel. So we have color grading, you know, you can toggle this effect here, uh, you know, and then just kind of play around with some of the settings. Um, or you can go ahead and just jump down to any of these presets. You know, we've got a whole bunch of presets you can work with to actually apply a different coloring effect to your photo. Uh, I, I, bl I believe these are our LUT files. Uh, so, you know, they're very standard classic type of file that you can use. And then at the very bottom here, if you create an image that you really like and you want to apply it to other images, you can save it as a preset to apply it later on. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of the Radiant Photo software. If you'd like to learn more, head over to nicolzi.me slash radiant. You can also use the link in my blog post or in the description of this video. Have a wonderful day and take care.